All right, let's talk about roof underlayments today. That's a common topic and you get a lot of our clients who ask us, you know, what's the difference in your proposal versus others? Uh, what's your best practices? What kind of materials do you use? And a lot of the guys talk about the material manufacturer. So say Owens Corning or Gaff, or uh, there's a plenty of different manufacturers out there. But really the last defense before water gets into your house is the underlayment. So today we'll talk about the underlayment. Typically what we see on a lot of competitors' proposals, obviously clients show us those all the time, um, they have a 15 pound felt and that's code. It meets most manufacturers recommended minimums. By the way, I should emphasize minimum, <laughs> minimum requirement for the underlayment. And this is a sample of that here. Funny thing is we didn't even have any of this in our warehouse. We actually had to buy some just so I could do this video. <laughs> uh, we usually send them out uh, with our roofing consultants so they can show you the difference, but it's real, real flexible. Uh, but it also bends and breaks. So it's, it's a felt paper. It has tar in it. Uh, so in theory, it grips a nail. So let's stick a nail through here. This is a cap nail that we use for the underlayment. Stick a nail through here and it pulls out and it kind of wraps around, but you can still see some light through around that nail. But uh, I'll do a rip test and you can just see how easily it rips. Uh, it dries out if it's in the sun. I think you can only have this exposed, say if we waterproof, not we, but if someone waterproofed with this and then didn't get to your roof in time, it can actually dry out. You can only really leave this exposed for 30 to 60 days. That's not what we use. What we use is a combination, I'll show you this in a second, of a synthetic underlayment. So if I put that cap nail right where it showed me to, it takes a lot more effort to get through. And then if you try pulling it out, it grips a lot harder than the 15 pound. The best thing about this though, is the rip, you cannot rip this. I mean, really, I'll, I'll usually have someone grab onto it on the other side and pull, and I'm really doing my best to rip it, and you can't rip this, that's the best reason for it. So we only use a synthetic underlayment. In the valleys, where two roofs come together, we actually use a peel and stick, it's called an ice and water shield. We don't have much ice in San Diego, but the benefit of this is when you peel it off, it sticks to the roof structure, to the deck, the plywood, or the skip sheeting that you have. It's really sticky, and it, speaking of the nail test, when you stick a nail through this, it wraps all the way around. You can even see it on the bottom, it just grabs, grabs onto the nail, and when you pull it out, it really closes in on that. So even over time, it'll lock around every single nail. I heard a statistic, which I actually do believe, I haven't tested for myself, but an average roof has 8,000 nails used in it. So uh, imagine having this and this as your last protector for rain, as opposed to this stuff. So that's exactly why we only use this. So if you ever see 15 pound felt, even 30 pound felt, that's a notch up from this. Uh, it's really not the best. It is a less expensive, I can't argue that. Uh, but it's really not the best long term. It'll get the job done, but how long is it going to last? So keep that in mind as the underlayment. Oftentimes, in my opinion, can be more important than the top layer, the actual roofing uh, shingles themselves. Thank you.